kids i hope you all are fine today we are going to start chapter so read and enjoy chapter 9 safari world read and enjoy when my parents told us that we were booked on an african safari in the first week of july i jumped with excitement and joy our destination was the masai mara national reserve It is one of the Africa's greatest wildlife reserves. It is famous for the big five: lions, elephants, rhinos, leopards, and wild buffaloes. I was excited to see the beautiful beasts in their natural homes. Dad told me to pack a rucksack with a pair of binoculars, my camera, a water bottle, a pen knife, and a notebook. He explained how these things would be needed. A few weeks later, a small plane prepared to land at the Mara Sarna airstrip. The reserve was surrounded by open swarna forest with the river here flowing alongside. Suddenly, one of the most attractive sights met our eyes. It was the wild beast migration. Hundreds of gnus running in a mass across the open land and getting into the powerful waters. Dad said we were indeed lucky to witness the sight. Our safari guide was called Akin Lana that means brave. We became friends soon. He was actually very knowledgeable. He also had a never ending stories to tell us around the campfire at night. That night we slept under the stars in the open. I thought I would never go to sleep as fixed my eyes on the lightning in the distance. In the morning, a kinlana showed us large into the white sandy track. Lion, I asked, and he nodded. With a kinlana's help, we traced the tracks for a few kilometers and we could soon spot a huge male lion resting in the open. Nearby, A couple of cubs were playing under the watchful eye of their mother. Secretly, I took pictures. Our open jeep crossed the grassland almost silently. A large herd of zebras hardly looked up even when we drove quite close to them. A kinlana told us that zebras were the favorite food of some animals, and sure enough, we saw our first cheetah sitting on a termite mound. looking at the herd for snakes it was lush and green just after the rain that night we put our tents at the edge of a pond we could see the hippos there akinlana told us that hippos are among africa's most dangerous animals the night was scary because of all kinds of animal sounds the next morning akinlana took us to moremi a tribal village The villagers taught us how to drink the nutrition contents of a fruit which was a size of a watermelon and the fine art of grabbing a scorpion by the stinger. From a distance a group of merkets was observing us. They were quite brave and one even climbed up my dad's shoulder and even stood on his head. We drove through the forest. Suddenly, we came face to face with a herd of elephants. They were females with their young ones. The females pushed their babies back with their trunks and charged. But Akinlana explained that it was not a real charge because the elephants were sticking their ears out to make themselves look bigger. At last, it was the final day of our safari. I woke up at dawn to the beautiful sight of a flock of graceful ostriches. I looked through my binoculars and saw a herd of rhinos. I watched in silence until a kinlana called out asking if I wanted to take a dip in the mara. We spent an hour splashing in the water, having mud fights and playing tug of war with a towel. On the way back to the camp, I was silent on the drive back to the Ears trip. I had fallen in love with Masai Mara. I would miss my friend Akinlana. I would miss the sounds of the forest. Now I can proudly boast of having seen the giraffe, the tallest mammal of earth, use his thick long tongue to pick leaves from a tree. 
and spotted leopard sitting on a branch waiting for its prey. I can tell my friends that I woke up every morning to see the bushback deer grazing just outside my tent. I had actually taken a baby market in my hand. I have been lucky indeed to have had wonderful opportunity to visit the park. I hope you enjoyed this chapter. We will meet in the next chapter. Thank you so much.